What's up, everybody? It's your boy Melf here for another classic review, and today I'm going to talk about thoughts on a on the most famous one, the eleventh incarnation of the Scooby Doo franchise, which had to be the best of all. Scooby Doo Mystery Incorporated first premiered back in April fifth of twenty ten, and concluded on April fifth of twenty thirteen with only. Two seasons and 52 episodes. And to tell you the truth, this has to be the best one of all. But before we begin, did you subscribe? Did you hit the bell? If so, did you find a mysterious locket under the capes of your town? You try to figure yourself, who does it belong to? Who are these, two pe these people in the photo? And you receive a phone call telling you, you dug into something that should have been open and left hidden from centuries ago. So yeah. Scooby-Doo Mystery Incorporated or not as Mystery Incorporated or Scooby-Doo Mystery Inc. is the 11th incarnation of the Scooby-Doo franchise, which of course, this is actually the first that was not originally run on Saturday morning. The series produced by Warner Bros. Animation and for the Cartoon Network UK division and premiered on the United States on April 5th of 2010 with the next 12 episodes continuing and the first episode re-airing in July 12th of 2010. The series concluded April 5th of 2013 after two seasons and 52 episodes. Mystery Incorporated returns to the early days of Scooby and the gang where they're still solving mysteries in their hometown though it makes multiple references to previous incarnations of the franchise. The series takes a tongue-in-cheek approach of the classic Scooby formula with increasingly outlandish technology skills scenarios making up each villain story and different spin on the famous meddling kids quote at the end of every episode. Contrasting sharply with this and others. However, are two elements that have never been used in Scooby Doo series before a serial format with an ongoing story arc featuring more dark plot elements that are treated with near total seriousness and ongoing relationships, drama among the characters. Furthermore, it is also the first series in this franchise to make use of real ghosts and monsters since the 13 ghosts of Scooby-Doo. Damn. I didn't put that two, two together. <sighs> Sorry. The series also pays homage to the horror genre, drawing many, many works from film, television, literature, in both parodic and serious ways, from horror film classics like A Nightmare on Elm Street and modern film modern horror films such as Saw, the television series Twin Peaks, and the works of H.P. Lovecraft, along the classic monster horror films shown in the previous series. In particular, in the second series, the central story arc evolves to heavily feature the use of Babylonian mythology, exploring the Anunnaki the Babylonian and modern pseudo-scientific concept of Nibiru and the writings of Zechariah Sitchin. Other hand of our characters occasionally guest star such as Captain Caveman, Jabberdoll, Speed Buggy, The Funky Phantom, and Blue Falcon and Dino Mutt. Oh yeah, you don't forget about J Johnny Quest. They made an appearance as well. And they play a certain important role in this as well. As was the case with the previous three installments in the franchise, Mystery Corporate redesigns the main characters this time look time into a retro look that returns them to their original 69 outfits with some some small changes such as Velma now wearing bows in her hair. The series also animated debut Matthew L Lillard as the voice Shaggy. If you don't remember him, he portrayed the live-action 
persona of Shaggy in both the live action films Scooby-Doo and Scooby-Doo Scooby 2 Monsters Unleashed, which he's actually the perfect role for Shaggy. He also did appearance in Scream, if you don't remember him. He's the one saying, if you remember the scene in the video store, everything has a plot. Everybody's a sub, sub, everybody's a, ah, you know what I'm going to say. Witness. I'm bored. <laughs> We have Casey Chasm, the original voice of Shaggy, voice Shaggy's father in the first in the five episodes. Oh, I'll buy uncredited. That I did not know. So you have the original voice of Shaggy voicing his dad. I did not know that. You know the weird part is? His mom looks more like him than his dad. Well, his dad has the nose. His mom has the head. <laughs> and yeah, his mom is more of the artistic creativeness. Well, the dad, I don't know. I never knew this. We never get actually what the parents look like. And now we do. But back to this. Turns, fortunately, he was not credited. Uncredited, because I don't know why. This would be his last voice acting role before his death. So, this was his last role. He only did like five episodes. Well, I think it's five episodes depends on which one. Because remember, you already see his dad, his parents a lot. So, it depends. Like, you have the, the climax of the, of the first season. The ending of the third season. Of course, that. Including the other ones for season two. Which, yeah. I think that makes sense. We got Linda Cardellini, who played Velma in the live-action role. Which, oh, we got another one. And voiced Hot Dog Water, a recurring character in the series. They show also brought back characters seen in the previous scooter doo series, such as The Hex Girls and Vincent Van Gogh from 13 Ghosts of Scooby-Doo. Of course, they'll be watching Vincent Van Gogh movies. Why not bring back him? Though his character is portrayed as a direct homage to Vincent Price, being a famous horror film actor rather than an actual warlock. No shit. And the fight part is, you have actually... If you look at the background characters, you'll be a record set of them. You have, one, you have Mama Cass right there, and you also have Don Nuts right there. I think it was the scene where it was like, like an art gallery. One of them bringing a painting. That's Don Nuts. You can actually see his the, the, the detail. That's Don Nuts. They just use designs from the famous late actors as a background characters, which is actually pretty cool. Yeah, I already recognize Mama Cats and Don Nuts right there. That's actually pretty cool. In 2019, the series made available on Netflix in the US, along with What's New Scooby Doo? I did not know that. Let me check it's still there. If it ain't, well, we know what's gonna happen. Shit. Oh boy. But yeah. Let's talk about the plots about. Okay, you gotta start. Okay, let's start with season one. We got Fred, Daphne, Velma, and Shaggy, and Scooby. Which, of course, we're going to solve mystery in the town of Crystal, Crystal Cove. The self-proclaimed most hauntedest with DES, really, hauntedest place on Earth. Allegedly cursed town's long history of strange disappearances and ghosts and monster sightings formed the basis for its thriving tourism of the industry. As such, the adults of the town... Among them, the police chief, Bronston Stone, and the mayor, Fred's dad, Mayor Jones Sr., Sharon Bronston Stone, yeah, are not happy that the kids are debunking all the supernatural going-ons that brings in so much revenue as the overwrought schemes of charlatans and criminals. Matt, I don't blame because, hey, hold it. 
Oh, uh, same. Sorry, I have to sneeze. In addition to the traditional cases they solve, the team finds itself being nudged into an undercovering of a dark secret that is hidden in the past of Crystal Cove. Following crypto hints from faceless mystery man known as Mr. E, a play on mystery, the gang unearthed the legend of the cursed conquistador's treasure, the secret history of Crystal Cove's founding Daryl family, and the mystery unsolved disappearance of the four mystery-solving youths and their pet bird, the original Mystery Incorporated. Standing in their way of solving the mystery, however, <sniffs> there are the romantic entanglements pulling the kids apart. Shaggy finds himself unable to put his ro new romance with Velma ahead of his longtime friendship with Scooby, while Daphne Pines... For a trap, it says Fred, who obviously struggles to realize that he shares her hear her feelings too. If for season two, they return. Sorry, the return of the original mystery incorporated to Crystal Cove began a race between the two groups to locate the pieces of the Agnamic Planetsberg disc, which will point the way to the cursed treasure beneath the town. As the pieces are gathered, it became apparent that two groups are not only teams of mystery solvers that have lived in Crystal Cove. There's more than one. Many similar groups, always made up of four humans and an animal, have existed. And the secret behind their centuries-long connection will reveal the truth behind the curse of Crystal Cove. The fate of the gang's friendship and all of reality itself hangs in the balance of as an extra, extra dimensional force gathers the preparation and the time of the Nibiru draws in. Which, holy shit. <sighs> well, the first scene of Scooby Doo Mystery Incorporated ran for 26 episodes from 2010 to 2011, with an unknown stop to the airing of the episodes after the first, after episode 13. The first episode of season of season premiered as a sneak peek on April 5th of 2010 and re-aired on July 12th of 2010 on Cartoon Network, along with the next 12 episodes in the United States. The series continued to air in Canada's Teletoon after episode 13. The remaining 13 episodes dubbed as a second season by Cartoon Network began airing on May 3rd of 2011. Until tw July 26th of 2011, during the hiatus, the first episode of the second season premiered on March 30th of 2012 on Cartoon Network and aired on Boomerang in the UK on June 2nd of that year. With four more episodes premiering until June 6th of 2012, the official Warner Bros. website announced the second season will begin airing on Cartoon Network on May of that year of 2012. But was set back to July 30th of 2012 in the US the first 15 episodes aired on weekdays after July 30th of 2012 until August of 2012 the show went on another hiatus until March 25th uh, of next year in 2013 when the remaining episodes of season 2 began to air in the US and conclude in April 5th of 2013 <laughs> Damn, what's all those pausing here? That's a bit weird, ain't it? I remember it was on hiatus after the end of season one, which got me. It was in lifting a cliffhanger about what happened. Each episode of the series is called a chapter in the line with the show's overarching story, number from 1 to 52 across both seasons. <laughs> As you know, we have. The voice actor, we have Frank Welker, as you know, is Fred Jones, and also doing as Scooby-Doo. We have Mindy Cohen, who played the live-action version of Velma in the mo two movies. It's for the role as Velma. We have Gray DeLizzi as Daphne Blake. We have Matthew Lillard, Matthew Lillard who is the live-action Shaggy from the movies. Reprise the role as Shaggy. And we have recurring... Characters like Louis Black as Mr. E, <laughs> aka Ricky Owens, one of the original members of Mr. Corporate and the CEO of a 
company that actually calls pollution due to the effects of the curse that happens him and his former gang friends from the past. <laughs> we also have Lindy Cardelli as Hot Dog Water, aka Marcy Fleach. We have Tia Carrera as Judy Reeds. <laughs> and who is the mother, the actual mother of Fred? Which, spoiler alert, in the end of season one, when he encountered a, me, a, a, a villain, was the freak, it turns out is no other than Mayor Jones because he knew what happened to the original Mystery Incorporated because he scared him off. And one day, Judy and Brad came back with a baby boy and he told him to leave, but leave his son with him. It turns out, Judy and Brad are his actual parents, and Mayor Jones just play pretend to be is not his real father. To the sadness of the sheriff, what well, <laughs> tell me it's not true. Oh, shut up. <laughs> of course, that begins the ultimate separation. Like Fred realized that he never knew his parents because his first clue was the pa the photo of his mom, his supposed mom, was actually a count a photo of a calendar. Also, that's when everything starts to break loose, like Fred canceling the wedding for Daphne, which of course breaks her heart. Then of course the separation of everybody, like Shaggy's parents send him to military school and Scooby on a farm. Meanwhile, Scooby encounters Professor Pericles, who is the original member, the original mascot of the original Mystery Incorporated, who's the main villain and very intelligent, which explains that he has to remain in pieces. He's still looking, which he's until Scooby vows to, to stop him if it's the last thing he does, which leads to the cliff, cliff, a cliffhanger right there. Until the second season, where we meet. A new villain called the the baby man baby clown that has been terrorizing the town, and we meet the new mayor of Crystal Lake, Jeanette Nettles, voiced by Kate Higgins, which of course, due to Bronson's upset because he first he, he supposed to be him as mayor since he says to be the sheriff you'll read it there but of course do her say the people voted for her so yeah <laughs> let me see something here hold it that's what I was saying we also have Vivica A. Fox as Angel Dynamite aka Cassie Williams, a DJ of a radio station who's been a a true a loyal ally to the Mystery Gang, and also the one of the original members of the of the Mystery Incorporated Gang, and also the love entrance of Ricky Owens, aka Mister E. We also have Udo Kier as Professor Pericles, who's actually the Former, the mascot of the former gang and also the main villain of the whole series. We also have Tim Maverson as Brad Childs, Fred's actual dad, and also one of, a former, one of the former members of Mystery Inc. from the past. And we have Patrick Warburton as Sheriff Bronson Stone. <laughs> As for home media, prior to the volume release of the first episode of, in the series, Beware the Beast Below was released as a bonus episode in the special feature of Scooby-Doo Camp Scare on September 14th of 2010. Menace of the Manticore was also released as a bonus feature on Big Top Scooby-Doo on October 9th of that of two years later. Also, when the Cicada calls from season one and the devouring from season two was released on Scooby-Doo 13 Spooky Tales for the Love of Sa Snack on January the 7th, 2014. Night on Haunted Mountain 
was also released on Scooby-Doo 13 Spooky Tales, Field of Screams, on May 13, 2014. Warner Home Video started releasing episodes to DVD on January 25th of 2011 in the U.S. The first three volumes contained the four episodes from the series, each in order as they aired on Cartoon Network. The final volume, named Crystal Cove Curse, contains the remaining 14 episodes from the first season. The first 13 episodes of season 2 were released on DVD, which, enti which entitled Danger in the Deep on November 13th, 2012, while the second half of the season 2 <laughs> titled Spooky Stampede was released on June 3rd, 18th of 2013. Water Home Video began releasing volumes for the UK on August 29th of 2011. <laughs> Excuse me. But yeah, this actually had released a nomination from the Kids' Choice Award Awards for Favorite Cartoon, both 2011 and 2012. <sighs> Damn. I didn't know about that. Well, yeah, let's talk about each of the episodes, shall we? But I never never... Okay, if I ever never the first one... Hold it, I gotta put my nose. <sighs> so yeah. Back to the same... The first episode was called Beware the Beats Below, which was the one that people remember when they first got a sneak peek, which gets first <laughs> sneak peek, and then it re-aired back in July 12th of 2010. A slime monster living beneath Crystal Cove is cocooned anyone who gets in the way, despite being warned not to continue this game by the parents and the authority figures to gain attempt to solve the mystery. While investigating the cave under Critical, Daphne finds a locket containing a photo of a young couple. The gang realizes the cocoon is made of frozen yogurt-like substance from the dessert shop. They realize the new shop and the bank are near each other. After trapping the monster in the dessert shop, they reveal the monster is, is their science teacher who was trying to tunnel into the bank. Later, the gang receives a call from Mr. E., who says the real mystery has just begun? <sighs> Overarching mystery events: the locket, shaped like a magnifying glass, found in Crystal Cove, and a call from Mystery, as well. It's also the famous weird melody from the locket when she when Daphne opens. <sighs> also, we have a pair, a like a note that shows the mu those the. The Mystery Museum, or the Hall of Monsters, run by da run by Velma's parents, <laughs> has most of the, the their former villains' rogue gallery that they ever saw from the original series, like the Green Ghost, <laughs> the Werewolf, Minor 49er, Captain Cutler, Space Coop, Creeper, Charlie the Robot from the original series, and the Haunted Museum as statues, also... The mystery group tour, a man resembling as Don Nuts is present, which of course Scooby Doo teamed up with Don Nuts in the new Scooby Doo movies, which you will see him a lot, including Mama Cat as well. <sighs> Another one is called Creepy Creatures. Was the second one when they go into a swamp called Gatorsburg. The theft of a of their engine prompted them to check into the local hotel. A sensor message appears to Scooby. Who was later forced to spend the night in the mystery machine? He attacked. He's attacked by Gator people and leads them back to the hotel where they chase the gang. Only stopping once the gang steps out of Gettysburg. Hold it. As I was saying, sorry, I had to sneeze. The gang returns to realize the Gators are passing our official Gator skin product as real. They reveal the Gator people as the only three residents of the town, the hotel's owner, her son, and her brother, the mechanic. Which, of course, the RIG mystery events, the hotel signs, dogs dies. And mystery's note claiming the Gators is one piece of the puzzle. Fun fact, a man resembling Clark Griswold from the film National Lampoon's Vacation appears in a cold open with his family... As a lost tourist traveling in the distinctive wagon Queen Valley truckster from the vacation film, when Fred is showing 
Daphne his scrapbook of traps. He mentions some villains they caught with particular traps, including Coronada, the Gypsy, and the Phantom of Vargas Castle from the original series. Which is actually pretty funny. But something else. The panner in the Gettysburg flashback is Nugget Nose from Galloping Ghost segment of Buford and the Galloping Ghost Show. When Squee breaks through the door where Fred and Daphne are, he recreates John Candy running from the bear and standing in front of the door out of breath from the great outdoors. <laughs> you got a lot of cameos here. Oh, here's a kicker right here. The style and story of the episode are influenced from the 1976 horror film Eaten Alive. Such as the look and setting of the rundown motel located in the deserted swampland and run by bizarre proprietors, the heavy use of red lighting, and the killer gator people, and now a crocodile in a film. <coughs> the next one was episode 3, Secret of the Ghost Rig, where a mysterious ghost truck has been running people off the road, and crystal, crystal doorknobs all over the city have been spearing. Of course, the truck discover the truck has outfitted with unique tires. They follow the tire truck to a secret hideout where the crystal co crystal do door knobs are stashed. Meanwhile, Mayor Jones is running against George Avocados, Avocados, for re-election. Marty and Dan Blake try to set Daphne up with wealthy heir Rung Latterton with Angel's help. The game found out that Avocados purchased tires identical to those of the ghost truck and that his father stole a priceless diamond long ago and hid it as a doorknob. Suspecting Avocados, the game traps the ghost truck and only discover is driven by a driven driver is Rung, the heir, who is not as wealthy as the Blakes believed and needs the diamond to restore his fortune. Wow. That's spread for money, ain't ya? Next one is called The Revenge of the Man Crab, which, of course... Also, fun fact, Daphne has, has an allergy of shellfish. Literary. Which, of course... This, the man crabs are chasing everybody, and... Here's a kicker. If you don't know it's in the background of the people... Dylan and Brandon from the... No... Dylan and Brenda from the television show Beverly Hill Bill Beverly Hills 90210 appeared in the cold open as the first two victims of the giant crab beast. Older versions of Pebbles and Bam Bam from the Flintstones maybe I briefly appear in the volleyball pitch. I'm talking about their older selves, like from their show, the Pebbles and Bam Bam show. They appear there. <laughs> Which is actually quite funny. Also, the over in Mystery Events, a newspaper photo revealing the kids in the locket as Brad Childs and Judy Reeves. The next one, Song of Mystery, a monster called Gehorioko, is turning children of Crystal Gold into a monster or spookified. Which is a famous monster from Peruvian folklore. Which, of course, turns out to be Marianne, who's actually a tutor, because who wanted the Crystal Coves with no adults so she can turn the city into her utopia. Yeah. The next one's called The Legend of Alice May, and this one is one of my favorite, actually one of my favorites, because it's very a famous lore about of a... You know, guys, good with a girl. It turns out she's actually a ghost, and she just disappears. This one is a kicker. Fred falls for a new student called Alice May, who asks out to prom. Much as Daphne's disgust, she later knows suspicious behavior from Alice. Investigates, find out more suspicious behavior. Meanwhile, the gang stumbles onto a mystery of a ghost kidnapping prom dates. They follow the clues to a cemetery where the ghost girl attacks them, hides in a crypt, which of course. When they when they find clues to relating to the crimes of Deacon 
Carlswell, aka the Creeper. They find also they also find a yearbook where the original Mystery Incorporated is listed as a club. Everyone goes to prom, where the ghost girl attacks. The gang traps her, revealing to be Alice. She's Deacon's daughter and wants revenge on the gang for getting her father locked up. Later, a man working for Mystery releases Alice from prison, revealing Deacon never had a daughter. And she was working for Mystery as well. The man wants the gang to start looking into the real Mystery. Hidden beneath Crystal Cove, a mystery led to the experience of four youths, a mystery whose time has come to be solved. Which is actually pretty cool. And also, there's a cameo. Members of the Chan Clan from The Amazing Chan and The Chan Clan, which is a cartoon series based on the famous Charlie Chan. Sorry, are seen leaving the auditorium. This also marks the first mention of Vincent Van Gogh in the series, though only he only appeared on television. Deacon Carlswell, the Creeper from Scooby Doo, are you? Is referenced. Also, in a flashback. The next one is well, there's more like the Fear for Phantom, which features the Hex Girls, which is actually a parody, a which of course. Vincent Van Gogh from the 13 Ghosts also makes a cameo appearance. The motif of the mysterious disco fandom of the music venue is a reference to the 1974 loose adaption of Phantom of the Paradise, which is a parody of Phantom of the Opera. Which is actually pretty cool. They made a reference a parody of Phantom of the Paradise, which it's a cult classic. Next, let's grab some the gnomes. Then we have Battle of the Humongonuts. Howl the Frighthound. Which is a parody of the Terminator. Then we got Secret Serum. Which is the... Like I said, whatever I said. This one has the, the cameo of Mama Cass. And also auctioneered to be based on the television series by expert David Dickinson. We have the second, the next one is Shrieking Madness, which of course, each of the gang, sorry, can explore their own ways until they can be, they investigate Professor H.P. Haycraft, which was a parody of H.P. Lovecraft, which features the famed beast of Cthulhu and a cult. There's a lot more, but yeah. I'll skip the whole thing. I'm going to... Okay. There's... This will be a, like a bigger episode, so yeah. It'll be making more interesting. One is featuring the Greek gods of love, Aphrodite. Which turns out to be hot dog water. And also... Escape from Mystery Manor, which is the... It's like a parody of Saul. Actually, the game visits the ruins of Darrow Manor. Which, in the opening of the episode, we can take back years ago on Halloween night at the Darrow Mansion where the family are fighting over the, the infamous piece of the plaspheric disc and the house sinks to the ground on Halloween night. Where, where the university is, they encountered the last remaining member, Danny, Who's the last of the family, but he looks, he looks like Gollum from Lord of the Rings, but... When the turns out, he explains what happened during the night. Is that the desk is cursed? It's when the house is about to collapse. He told him to leave and take the dead piece because it cursed him and his family. And he sacrificed his life. And finally, we have for season two. We have the mysterious one of all, the freak. Of Crystal Cove, which this was the the boat, the cliffhanger right here for the final scene of season one because this was like a we have flashback both from both from the original gang and the current one. Which the ending turns out, Fred is not the son of Mary Jones because his real parents are Brad and Judy because the mayor didn't want them back because of the treasure. Because he knew the game when he was in high school at the time. 
Of course, the suit called Night of the Clown Cried, which features a villain known as Crybaby Clown, which he became a villain like for twice. There's two parts, part one and part two, called Tears of Doom. Of course, the second one is featuring a Russian folklore, Baba Yaga. But there are a lot of other episodes because I would love to talk about it, but there's another one because, okay, Night on Haunted Mountain, which is called Dark Love, which turns out a hot dog walker worked for Mr. E, which, of course, they found the, the fake galleon of the fake conquistador. As they leave, they counter the spirit of the conquistador saying the sea word, the Biru, before laughing and fading away. Which, holy shit. Damn, bad allergies. And, okay, I like this one. Grim ju Judgment. A ghostly Puritan judge, Hema Diane Grimm, judging the women of Crystal Cove, which it turns out to be the Grimm and Gary, Gary and Ethan, the two soccer jocks, trying to get in babes. Oh, boy. I want to take these two. The next one was Midnight Zone, where World War II Nazi robots attack Cassie at her radio station. She goes to the gate for help, explains the robots have attacked her for weeks. The gang discovers they are coming from under the sea, where death recruits her babysitting charges Tom and Tub, where their parents own our marine scientists. Which, of course, they find so upon a base where the robots are ma are being manufactured, they also discovered the corpse of Abigail Gluck, a former member of the Benevolent Lodge of Mystery, who says Nibiru, they discover per Pericles is behind the robots, they escape as the base begins to self-destruct, but Cassidy stays behind. The hole opens the jammed door, and when returns to serve except Cassidy, Pericles gets his sixth piece in the disc. Which, of course, are racking the mystery events. The, the lost original center of Crystal Cove, which vanished over three centuries ago, now submerged beneath the sea, is inhabited, mi inhabits missionaries, where the conquistadors, who were the source of the mi Crystal Cove's curse, Base revealed to have constructed by Fra Abigail Gluck, the member of the old mystery solid group, but of a lodge of mystery, her body whispers Nibiru upon his discovery, the final piece of the final is found by Professor Pericles, which, holy shit. Which, of course, the Midnight Zone is like a title parody of the Twilight Zone. Ain't that weird, ain't it? And we got no one featuring no than the famed Christmas dreams of Krampus. Yeah, scaring the shit out of kids, but it's actually Charlie the Robot. But it turns out it was a trick to get the pieces from the other gang because they knew about it. But yeah. The next one's Theater of Doom, which is actually a play based on what happened to the events of the former colony of, of Crystal Cove. When it turns out the main villain is actually George Av Avakados because he used the diamond to restore his fortune after the gang accidentally blew up his avocado farm, which caused him to be broke and has become a janitor. Ouch. Here's the thing. The game traps prevent the avocados in the final of the end of the villain. That's when, while they're talking, they wait. They question, wait, who put the friar's body back in the glass coffin? And say, nobody, this then out of nowhere, the great, mysterious green fog appeared on the coffin. And the real ghost of Friar Gabriero Serrera tells them what really happened. He explains that. That it was his donkey Porto who destroyed them all, causing the seven to sink. And Serrera warns them of the Biru, then he's to warn the dog dies as, as the animal mascot who leads the group to the downfall. Which, of course, we see the flashback of the original the monks 
when he counted the na the conquistador called the, the currency treasure, the there's this when he hit it, it said the old cheese, which is actually in the in the first season with the hound do the 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 dog. Remember the museum of curiosities. I like these backgrounds. Including the ghost one is actually real. It's actually pretty cool. There's a lot more, but yeah. The ending is actually trippy. The final episode where it turns out come on down where the gang of the original Miss Corbin stands before the evil entity until one by one they all killed, including when per Pericles is possessed by the evil entity, transforming into this kafoo like monster. At the end, they get defeated, but somehow it changed everything. Like the curse never existed, nothing. Everything like everything's like the curse has become undone. The gang actions have created a perfect world where they live productive, normal lives, and all the villains who never committed their crimes, like no, like crime and Cassie, hot dog water, water, Brad, Judy, Perkins, Ricky are alive, but they have different lives now. Harold Edison, who is now called Mystery, contacts the gang and tells them he knows who they are. He knows about creating an alternate timeline by destroying the evil entity due to him being a genius and hyper-tuned psychic and hyper on connection to the alternate dimension. He's able to remember every timeline it has created. So, the gang has slipped into the time stream with him. He has admitted the gang could scooby to Mescanonic University to meet in his class next semester. And he mentioned there's a lot of meddling to do and a lot of mysteries to solve. And that was that. And that was, season, that was the whole season of Scooby Mr. Corporate. And oh boy, to tell you the truth, I love this series because this has to be the best one because, yes, you got your fake ghost, but you have also the backstory. Real. Backstory, what ha what's the curse, the lore right there? Damn. Hey, we got some tragic s stories, happy ones, sad ones, scary ones, parodies. Damn. They did it right. I kind of wish they continue this because it left in a cliffhanger what they're going to do now. But yeah, so let me know what you know about Scooter Mr. Corbrand. What Was this your favorite series above all the Scooby-Doo franchises? To me, this was my favorite one, besides calling the original. It pays how much, and it's written well as well. But yeah, if you're new to the channel, remember to subscribe, hit the bell, like this video, and tell me what's your favorite episode of Scooby Doo Mr. Corporate, who's your favorite character, your villain, etc. And I'll see you next time. Peace out, people. I'm about to kill myself. We.